Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 9. Vice Principal Morinfield studied the three men who stood like a well-mortared wall in her office. The outward appearance would never indicate they were brothers. One wore a thin, trim gray suit and perfectly knotted tie, another black shirt and jeans, and the third faded khakis and a wrinkled denim work shirt. But she could see that at the moment they were as united as triplets in the womb. I realize you have busy schedules. I appreciate all of you coming in this morning. We want to get this straight now, Mrs. Morinfield. Philip kept a mild, negotiating smile on his face. Seth needs to be in school. I agree. After Seth's statement yesterday, I did some checking. It does appear as though Robert instigated the incident. There does seem to be some questions about over the motivation. The matter of the petty extortion. Cam, hand on my hand, says, Did you tell this Robert character to give you a dollar? Nah, Seth tucked his thumb in his front pockets as he seen Cam do. I don't need his money. I don't even talk to him unless he gets in my face. Cam looked back at Miss Mournful. Says, says, yeah, he aced that test, and Robert flunked. Is that right? The vice principal pulled her hands over the desk. Yes, the test papers were handed back yesterday, just before the end of the class. And Seth received the highest grade. Now, seems to me, Ethan interrupted in a quiet voice, that Seth told you straight then. Excuse me, ma'am, but if the other boy lied about some of it, could be lying about all of it. So it says the boy came after him, and he did. He said it was about this test, so figure it is. I've considered that, and I tend to agree with you, Mr. Quinn. I've spoken with Robert's mother. She's no happier than you are about this incident, or about the fact that both boys are to be suspended. You're not suspended, says Cam Plinifer. Not over those. Not without a fight. I understand how you feel. However, blows were exchanged. Physical violence can't be permitted here. I'd agree with you, Miss Morinfield. Under most circumstances, Philip went hand on Cam's arm to prevent him from stepping forward. However, Seth was being physically and verbally attacked. He defended himself. There should have been a teacher monitoring the hallway during the change of class. He should have been able to depend on an adult on the system to protect him. Why didn't one come forward to do so? Mournfold puffed out her cheeks, blew out of breath. There's a reasonable it's a reasonable question, Mr. Quinn. I won't start weeping to you about budget cuts, but it's impossible with a staff of our size to monitor all the children at all times. I sympathize with your problem, but Seth shouldn't have to pay for it. There's been a rough time recently. Ethan put in. I don't figure that kicking the boy out of school for a couple of days is gonna help him any. Education's supposed to be more than learning. Leastways, that's how we were taught. Supposed to help you build your character and help teach you how to target, how to get out in the world. If it tells you that you get booted for doing what you had to, for standing up for yourself, then there's something wrong with that system. You punish him the same way you punish the boy who started it. Came said, you're telling him there's no difference between being right and wrong. It's not the kind of school I want my brother in. More foots stapled her hands, looked over the tips of her fingers, the three men. Then Donald said, Your evaluation tests were excellent, and your grades are well above average. However, your teachers say you rarely turn in homework assignments, and even more, rarely participate in class discussion. We're dealing with the homework. Cam gave Seth a subtle nudge, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't see why. You don't have to see. Cam cut him off with one of the low grains. You do have to do it. We can't sit in the classroom with him and make him open his mouth, but he'll turn in his homework. I imagine he will, she murmured. That is what I'll agree to do, Seth, because I believe you and you won't, you won't be suspended. But you will go on a 30-day probation. If there, any, if there are no more disruptive incidents and your teachers report that you have improved your at-home assignment record, we'll put this matter aside. However, your first homework assignment comes now from me. You have one week to write a 500-word essay on the violence in our society in a need for peaceful resolution problems. Aw, oh, man, shut up, cameraman. That's fair, said the miss. Says Morfield. We appreciate it. That wasn't so bad. Phil stepped back into the sunlight. Roll his shoulders. Speak for yourself. Ethan snugged his cap on his head. I was sweating bullets. I don't want to have to do that again in this lifetime. Drop me off at the waterfront. I can get a ride off to the boat. Jim's working her, and he ought to have pulled in a nice mess of crabs by now. Just make sure you bring us home our share. Cam piled the Philip shiny navy blue Land Rover. And don't forget, we've got company coming. 
Not going to forget. He's a mama. Principals in the morning, social workers in the evening. Christ Jesus. The time we turn around, you have to talk to somebody. I intend to get Miss Spinelli occupied. He just turn around and look at him. You just can't leave females alone, can you? What would be the point? They're here. He's an only side. Somebody better pick up more beer. He's an only side. Somebody better pick up more beer. Can't volunteer to get the beer late that afternoon. Wasn't altruism. He didn't think he could stand listening to Philip not a five minutes. Going to the market was the best way to get out of the house and away from the tension while Philip drafted and perfected a letter to the insurance company on his snazzy little laptop computer. Get some salad stuff while you're out. Philip shouted, Cause and can Turn back. Poke his head in the kitchen where Philip was slapping away the table. What are you made salad stuff? Failed grains, for God's sake. Don't come back here with a head of lettuce. Head of iceberg and a couple of tasteless hot, hot house tomatoes. I made up a nice vinaigrette the other day, but there's no not a damn thing around here to put it on. Get some plum tomatoes if they look decent. What the hell do we need all that for? Philip sighed. Stop talking. First, because we want to live long and healthy lives. And second, because you invited a woman to dinner. A woman who's going to look at how we deal with that nutritional needs. Then you go to the goddamn store. Fine, you write this goddamn letter. He'd rather be burned alive. <laughs> Fill grains. Persuade Christ's sake. And get some sourdough bread, and we're nearly out of milk. Since I'm going to be bringing my juicer the next time I get back to Baltimore, pick up some fresh fruit, some carrots, zucchini. I'll just make a list. Hold it. Hold it. Camp, camp, camp felt the control slipping out of his hands. It's struggling to fight. Fight. Shift his grip. I'm just going for beer or we bagels. Philip muttered busily writing. Thirty minutes later, Cam found himself pondering the products, produce section of the grocery store. What the hell? What's the difference between green leaf and Romanian leaf? And why should he care? In defense, he began loading the cart at random. Since that worked for him, he did the same thing through the aisles. By the time he reached checkout, he had two carts. Overflowing with cans, boxes, bottles, and bags. My goodness, you must be having a party. Big appetite. He told the checkout clerk, and after a quick search of his ba brain, begged her. How's it going, Mrs. Wilson? Oh, fair enough. She ran items sexually over the belt and scanner and into bags. Her quick red tipped fingers moving like lightning. <sighs> Too pretty a day to be stuck inside here, I can tell you that. I get off in an hour, and I'm going out chicken necking with my grandson. We're counting on having crab for dinner ourselves. Probably should have brought some chicken necks for the pot off our dock. <laughs> Ethan will keep you supplied, I imagine. I'm always sorry about Ray. I didn't really get to tell you so after the funeral. We're sure going to miss him. He used to come in here once or twice a week after Stella passed. Buy himself a pile of those microwave meals. I tell him, Ray, you gotta do better for yourself than that. Man needs a good slap of meat now and then. But it's hard thing cooking, for one, when you're used to family. Yeah. It was all Cam could say. He'd been family. Then he hadn't been there. Always had some story to tell about one of you boys. Showed me pictures and things from foreign newspapers on you. Racing here, racing there. And I'd say, Ray, how you know if the boy won or not when it's written in Italian or Francais? We just laughed. Chief checked the weight of a bag of apples. Give him a... How's that young boy? What's his name now? Sam? Says. Came on him. He's fine. Good looking boy. Said to Mr. Wilson. When Ray brought him home, that's Ray Quinn for you, always keeping his door open. Don't know how a man at his age expected to handle a boy like that, but if anybody could, Ray Quinn could. He and Stella handled three of you, because she smiled, and when she smiled back, they did. We tried to give them plenty to handle. I expect they loved every minute of it, and I expect the boy Seth was company for Ray after y'all grew up and lit out. Well, no, I don't hold what, with what some people are saying. No, I don't. Her mouth thinned as she rang up three jumbo boxes of gold cereal with a chuck cluck at her tongue and a shake at her head. She I'll tell them straight to the faces. If they do that nasty gossip in my hearing, if they have a Christian bone in their body, they mind their tongues. Her eyes glitter with fear and loyalty. Don't you pay any mind to that talk, Cameron. Not my one at all. Why, the idea that Ray would have had truck with that woman, that boy was in his blood, not one decent mind's going to believe that, or that he'd run into a pole on purpose. Makes me just sick to hear it. It's making Cam sick now. He wished the guy ain't never come into the store. Some people believe lies, Mrs. Wilson. Some people would rather believe them. That they do. She nodded her head twice. 
And even if they don't, they like to spread them around. I want you to know that Miss Wilson and me consider Ray and Stella good friends and good people. Anybody says something I don't like about them around me, don't get their ears boxed. <laughs> he had a smile. Because I remember you were good at that. <laughs> she laughed now, kind of happy. Boxed yours that time you came sniffing too close to my Carolina. Don't think I didn't know what you were after, boy. Carolina was the prettiest girl in the great. She's still a picture. It's her boy I'm going chicken necking with. He'll be four this summer, and she's carrying her second in the sixth month now. Time goes by right fast. Same to did. Came stop when he was back at home and handing back some groceries into the house. He knew Mrs. Wilson had meant everything she said for the best, but she had certainly managed to depress him. Someone who'd been a stock friend of his friend, parents was being told such filthy lies. They were spreading more quickly and more thickly than he imagined. How long could they be ignored before details had to be given and a stand taken? Now he's afraid they would have to no choice but take Philip's advice and find Seth's mother. The kid was going to hate that. Cam knew. What would happen to the trust he'd seen swimming in Seth's eyes? Guess you want a hand with that stuff. Philip stepped into the kitchen. I was on the phone. The lawyer. Temporary guardianship's luck. There's step one away. On way. Great. Started really at the conversation in the grocery store, decided to let it ride for the night. God damn it, they'd won two battles that day. He was going to see the rest of the evening spoiled by wagging tongues. More out in the car, he told Philip. More what? Bags. More? Philip stared at the half dozen loaded brown bags. Jesus, Cam. Didn't have more than 20 items on that list. So I added to it. He pulled a box out, tossed on the counter. Nobody's going to go hungry around here for a while. You bought Twinkies. Twinkies, are you out? Are you one of those people who leaves that white stuff inside? Them is one of the four major food groups. The kid probably go for them. Sure he will. You can pay his dentist bill. It's temper dangerous close to the edge camera. Everyone. Look, pal. He who goes to the store buys what he damn well pleases. That's a new rule around here. Now do you want to get this that stuff out of the car or let it fucking rot? Philip <laughs> looked at about. Since shopping for food puts you in such a cheery mood. I'll take that little chore from now on. And we better start a household fund to draw from day to day incidentals. Fine, Kim waved him away. You do that. When Philip walked out, Kim began to stuff boxes of cans wherever they fit. He would be he would let somebody else worry about organizing. In fact he let anybody else worry about it. He was done for a while. He stared out at the front door. When he hit the front door, saw that Seth had arrived home. Philip was passing him bags, and the two of them were walk, were taking, talking as if they hadn't cared well. So he go out the back. He decided let the two of them handle things for a couple of hours. As he turned, the pup yipped at him and squatted and peed on the rug. I suppose you expect me to clean that up. One foolish whack his tail and lift his tongue well. All Cam can do was close his eyes. I still say the essays are raw deal, Seth complained as he walked into the house. That kind of stuff's crap, and I don't see why. You'll do it. You can't pull the bag out of Seth's on. And I don't want to hear any bitching about it. You can get started right after you clean up the mess your dog just made on the rug. My dog? He's not mine. He is now. And you better make sure he's housebroken all the way or he stays outside. Stuck off to the kitchen. Bill of Hoot was trying desperately not to laugh following. So I stood where he was, staring down at foolish. Dumb dog, he murmured. When he crouched down, the puppy launched himself into Seth's arm, where he's welcome with a fierce hug. You're my dog now. Anna told herself she would and could be perfer perfectly professional for the evening. She cleared the informal visit with Mar Marlowe just to keep it official. The truth was she wanted to see Seth again, ever bit as much as she wanted to see Cam. Different reasons, certainly, and perhaps different parts of her, but she wanted to see them both. She could handle both sides of her heart and her mind. She'd always been able to separate areas of her life and conduct them all in a satisfying manner. The situation wouldn't be any different. Vera soared out of her speakers, wild and passionate. She rolled her window up just enough that the breeze didn't disturb her hair. She hoped the Quins would allow her a few moments alone with Seth so she could judge for herself without influence how he was feeling. She hoped she could steal a few moments alone with Cam so she could judge for herself how she was feeling. Itchy, she admitted. Needy, but it wasn't act always necessary or possible to act on feelings, however strong they may be. If seen, if after seeing him again, she felt that it was best for all concerned to take a large step back, she would do so. She had no doubt the man had an iron will, but so did Anna Spinelli. She would match herself against Cameron Quint in the respect any day, and she could win. Even as she reassured herself of that, 
one single fact. Anna pulled her spiffy little car in the drive and Cam walked out on the porch. They stayed where they were for just a minute, each eyeing each other. When he came off the porch and onto the walk, that hard body tucked into snug black, that dark hair unruly, those smoky eyes unreadable, her heart took one helpless spin and landed with a thud. She wanted that tough-looking mouth on her, those rough palm hands on her. She wanted that all-male body pinning hers to a mattress, moving with the speed that was so much a part of his life. It was ironic. It was idiotic to deny it. But she'd handle him, Anna promised herself. She only hoped she could handle herself. She stepped out, wearing a prim posse suit, the color of a bird's nest. Her hair was pulled up and back and ruthlessly controlled. Her unpainted lips curved in a polite, somewhat distant smile as she carried a briefcase, for a reason that baffled him. It came with pers precisely the same reaction he had when she clipped down the hall on Slow Hills that rainy night. Instant and raging lusts. When he started toward her, she angled her head, just a little, just enough to send the warning signal. The hands-off sign was clear as a shout. When he leaned forward a bit, when she reached her, sniffed out of her. You did that on purpose. Did what on purpose? Wore that Dawn Touch suit, and the sex got a perfume at the same time, just to drive me crazy. Listen to the suit, Quinn. Dream about the perfume. Started past him, then looked dully down coolly when his hand clamped over her arm. You're not listening. I like to play games as much as the next guy, Anna. <laughs> tugged on to tugged into the turn, and they were again facing me. But you have, you may have picked a bad time for this one. <laughs> there was something in his eyes, she realized. Something along with desire, annoyance. And because she recognized it as unhappiness, she stopped it. Has something happened? What's wrong? Was right, he tossed back. He put a hand over the still clamp to her arm and squeezed lightly. Rough day? Yes, no, hell. Given up, he let go and leaned back on the hood of her car. It's a testimony to her compassion that she was able to stifle winds. She just had washed and waxed it. There was a there was this thing at school this morning. Thing? You'll probably get some official report or something about it, so I want to give you our side personally. Uh oh, sides. Well, here's. Let's hear it. So he told her he found himself heating up again when he got to the point where he'd seen the bruises on Seth's arm and ended up pushing himself off the car and stalking around it as he finished the story of how it had been resolved. He did very well, Anna murmured, nearly laughing when he stopped and stared at her suspiciously. Of course, hitting the other boy wasn't the answer, but I think it was a damn good answer. I realize that. We'll just let it go for now. My point is, you did the reasonable and the supporting thing. You went down, you listened, you convinced Seth to tell you the truth, and then you stood up for him. I doubt he was expecting you to. Why shouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? It was right. Believe it or not, not everyone goes to bat for their children. He's not my kid. He's my brother. Not everybody goes to bat for their brother, she corrected. Three of you going in the morning, in this morning, was exactly right. And again, unfortunately, more than anyone will do. It's a corner, it's a corner turn for all of you, and I suspect under that. I, I suspect you understand that. So that's what's upsetting you. No, that's pitifully. Other things, doesn't matter. He could hardly tell her about the investigation in his wall. Well, the village gossip over... It at this precocious point, nor did he think it would count in their favor if he confessed he was feeling trapped into man who dreaming of escape. How's that taking it? He's going with it. Him choked on. We went sailing yesterday. Did some fishing. Blew off the day. Just about to get him this time I was in it. I hope I'd be around to see it happen. You're starting to fall for him. What are you talking about? You're starting to care about him personally. He's beginning to more be more than an ovulation, a promise to be kept. It matters to you. I said I'd take care of him. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> it matters to you, she repeated. That's what's worrying you, Cam. What's happening? What happens if you start caring too much? And how do you stop it from happening? He looked at her the way the sun dropped down on the sky at her back. The way her eyes stayed warm and dark on his. Maybe he was worrying. He admitted, not just about his shifting feelings for himself. I finished what I started in, uh, and I don't walk away from my family. Looks like the kid qualifies there. But I'm a selfish son of a bitch. Ask anybody. <laughs> Some things I prefer to find out for myself. Now, am I getting a crap in or not? I used to have the pot going by now. Move forward as he led her inside. The judge in the mount, when she relaxed, he yanked her into his arm and caught her up in a hot, heart hammering kiss. See, that was for me. You remember when they were both breathless and coming? Wanted, take it, I warned you. I was selfish. Anna eased back, calmly adjusting her now rumpled jacket and a hand over her hair to assure herself it was placed. Sorry, but I'm afraid I enjoyed that every bit as much as you did, so it doesn't qualify as a selfish act. You left even as his post scrambled. Let me try it again. I can pull it off this time. Oh, 
I'll take a rain check. I want my dinner. With that, she sauteed up the steps, knocked briefly, slipped into the house. Cam just stood where he was, grinning. This woman, he thought, who was going to make this episode of his life a memorable one. By the time Cam made his way inside into the kitchen, Anna was already chatting with Philip. She in a glass of wine. You drink beer with crabs. Cam told her and got out, got one out of the fridge for himself. I don't seem to be eating any at the moment, and Philip assures me this is a very nice wine. She sipped, considered, and smiled. He's absolutely right. It's one of my favorite whites. Since she approved, Philip topped off a glass. Smooth, buttery, not overpowering. It was a wine snob. Cam twisted off the top of the bottle of the harp to slips. But we let him live here anyway. And how's that working out? She wanted to realize how mal the house seemed. Tardy as a pin, yes, but without even a whiff of female. Must be odd adjusting to the three of you in the same household again. Well, we haven't killed each other. Cam buried his teeth in a smile his brother. Yet. With a laugh, she walked to the window. And where is Seth? He's with these in, Philip told me. They're doing the crabs around the pit. The pit? Around the side, Cam told her. Cam took her hand and tucked her toward the door. Mom wouldn't let us go crab in the house. She might have been a doctor, but she could be squeamish. Didn't like to watch. He drew her off the porch, down the steps as he spoke. Dad had this brick pit around the side of the house. Fell down my first summer. You didn't know much about laying bricks, but we rebuilt it. When they stepped around the corner, she saw Ethan and Seth standing by a huge kettle over an open fire in a lopsided brick-sided pit. Smoke bellowing from a big steel barrel on the ground came the scraping and clattering of claws. And a look from barrel to kettle back in. You know what? I think I can be a bit squeamish myself. She stepped back, turned to the view of the water. She didn't even mind. The cam laughed at her, especially when she heard Seth's voice raise in desperate excitement. Are you dumping them in now? Oh, man. Shit. That is so gross. I told him to watch his mouth tonight, but he doesn't know you're here yet. She only shook her head. He sounds very normal. She winced a little when she heard a clatter. And Seth smiled an explanation with delight and disgust. And I think what happens around the corner is just barbaric enough to thrill him. Her hand lifted quickly, protectively to her hair, which she felt a tug. I like it down. Cam tossed the pin he pulled out aside. I want it up, she said mildly and began to walk toward the water. I bet we're going to knock heads about all kinds of things. He sipped his beer. Sent her a sidelong look. So said, well, I'd keep it uh, all interesting. I doubt either of us will be bored. Seth comes first, Cam. I mean that. She paused, listened to the musical lap of water against the hull of the boats, the slopping shoreline. Topping one of the markers was a huge nest. Buoys bobbled around the time. I can help him. And it's unlikely we'll always agree on what's right for him. It'll be essential to keep that issue completely separate when we end up in bed. He was grateful he hadn't taken no sip from the beer, no doubt his mind. <laughs> He'd have choked on it. I can do that. She lifted her head as an earnest soared by and wondered in the nest belonged to her. But I'm certain I can. We'll use my bed. My apartment's more private than your house. He rubbed his hand over his stomach. Beautiful tip to come, though. Lady, you're right up front, aren't you? What's the point of being otherwise? We're grown-ups, unattached. Shot him a look. Flick of a lashes in orchard mouth. But if you're the type you prefer me to pretend, Rook, reluctance until seduction... Sorry. No, I'm all right with it this way. If he didn't leave her, he'd explode in the meantime. No games, no pretenses, no promises. Where the hell do you come from? <laughs> he finished fascinated. Pittsburgh, city's in. Stared back to the house. That's not what I meant. But if you intend to sleep with me, you should have some interest in the basic facts. No games, no pretenses, no promises. That's fine, but I don't have sex with strangers. He put a hand on her arm. Before she wandered too close to the house, he went another moment. Okay. What are the basic facts? I'm 28, single, of Italian descent. My mother died when I was 12. I was raised primarily by my grandparents. In Pittsburgh. That's right. They're wonderful, old-fashioned, interjecting, loving. I can make a terrific red sauce from scratch. The recipe has been passed down to my family for generations. I moved to D.C. right after college, worked there, and did some graduate studies, but Washington didn't suit me. Too political? Yes, and too urban. I was looking for something a little different, so I ended up down here. Cam glanced around the quiet yard of quiet, quiet water. It's different from D.C., all right. I like it. I also like horror novels, sappy movies, and any kind of music except jazz. I read magazines from back to front and don't know why, and though I'm comfortable with all sorts of people, I don't particularly like large social functions. She stopped. Considered. They would see. She decided how much more he would want to find out. I think that's enough for now, and my glass is nearly empty. You're nothing like my first impression of you. 
No, I think you're exactly like mine. With you. You speak Italian. Fluently, he leaned forward and murmured, highly charged and sexual explosions and suggestion in her ear. Some women might have slapped his face, others might have giggled, some certainly would have blushed. Anna merely made a humming sound in her throat. Your accent's mediocre, but your imagination is exceptional. She gave him his arm and a light pat. Be sure to ask me again some other time. Damn right I will. Kim muttered and watched her smile in an easy, open manner, and Seth as he came barreling around the corner of the house. Hello, Seth. He skidded to a halt. That wary distant look came into his eyes. His shoulders lunch. Yeah, hi. Ethan says we can eat any time. Good. I'm starved. Though she knew he was braced against her, she kept walking toward him. I hear you went sailing yesterday. Seth's gaze lived by her, locked accusingly at Cam's. Yeah, so? I've never been. He said it quickly. Since that Cam's in draw breath was a signal for a sharp reminder of manners. Cam offered to let me tag along with you sometime. It's his boat. Then, <laughs> catching dark smile on Cam's face, Seth shrugged. Sure, that'd be cool. Supposed to go get a ton of newspapers spread on the porch. That's the way you eat crabs. Right. Before he could dash off, she bent down and whispered in his ear. Good thing for us Cam didn't cook them. That got a snicker out of him and a quick, flitting grin before he turned and ran inside. End of chapter 9.